Hello, everyone. All right, so let's go ahead and start. This is uh, a stand-up meeting, so uh, we're going to talk about what we did uh, over the past week or more, uh, if you're new, uh, what, what we need to do next week, and anything preventing you uh, from doing what you want to do. Um, we should also probably talk about the goal of, uh, of the work, which we, we were talking about a demonstration in August, um, but we've what's been raised is the potential uh, to be included or to try to be included in uh, Skylake. So uh, go ahead, uh, Thomas, would you like to start? Yeah, so um, on FPGA stuff, I've not really done much in a while, but um, my plan for the next few weeks is starting to relook at the JSD interface. So it's basically the interface to the um, analog devices um, transceiver chip. So basically we'll need that working to get the data from the transmitter onto the actual trans, um, transceiver and test it in RF. So I had a look at it before, I'm trying to use the analog devices, uh, basically, how do you call it, example project, but that was a bit messy. So I'm gonna try it again, a bit more of a fundamental um, starting point and then yeah, try and get that, up, that working. So yeah, that's my plan. Okay, so anything anything preventing you from from working? It sounds like you need the. Uh, they're talking about the analog devices dev board, perhaps that that needs to be up and up and working. Um, at some point, yeah, but not right now. Um, first probably a week or two will just be on the on base Vivado, so just on the computer. Okay. But yeah, once I've got the kind of a candidate working, then yeah, it'd be good to test that with the actual board. Good. Okay. Yeah, we have it. It's in the lab connected. Um, and that that's going to be something that Paul can help with uh, at any time. So if we if we start now trying to to get super familiar with it and and being able to tell whether or not it's it's working for people, if we sort of mm -hmm. develop that feedback loop now. Then uh, when the time comes to to uh, actually test something in earnest, then we should be in good shape. Okay, great, yeah. So, so I have that written down. All right, anything else? Um, I was also thinking probably at the same time I do this, I'm going to start the schematic capture of the AD trans transceiver. Um, basically, if I'm looking at the kind of physical interface, it's probably a good time to also just capture what that would look like in the schematic um, in KiCad. So it will be part of a potential prototype. Um, yeah, so I'll probably do that at the same time. Awesome. And then, do you have any 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 further comments on the potential for being included in the the Google ASIC project? Um, yes, yeah, so I think it's something we should try and do. Um, I think it's it's basically all we need to do is um, get a design. Well, we need to decide what design we want to to use. So, I mean, obviously, the DVB work that Andre and Anshul have been working on, but um, try and get it into kind of a self-contained um, form. And then once we've got that, we just need to get it synthesizing with Yosis. Um, and then we can feed it to the, the open lane back end tools to create the actual layout. But that's, yeah, that should be relatively straightforward. Um, first step is just to decide what, what we're going to do. Yep. Okay. The, what I, what I would really like to talk about is, is having a baseband chip. Is that, sound like a, a reasonable sort of thing to, to try to strive for? We, we'd... Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I think that'd be a good target uh, for, for me. I can understand that and, and can draw in some, some help. Uh, so maybe, is there anything that we would need to do for the uplink protocols for M17 or are we in decent shape just uh, providing GSE? Um, I'm not sure, I've not looked at that in detail. Maybe on has got Okay. More opinion. Yeah, I think that's the only open question that I have is how much we need to do um, in hardware, like how much would we have to synthesize in order to, to do that? And um, answer the right answer might be nothing, that we strictly view it as, uh, you know, it is our, our native digital protocol for the uplink and there's, gives us a lot of, of power, but that may all need, that may all be done in software. So there may not be anything that we have to synthesize, but we should be on the lookout for anything that, that might help customize this particular uh, code base, uh, make it make it easier to use for the operators. 
So yep. I don't think we can answer that today, but that's the sort of things I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. yep, sure. Thank you so much. This is yeah, no good news. Yeah. Anshul. Yeah. <clears throat> From my side, um, I've been working on coding for uh, GSC encoder. So progressing with that, uh, I've got header insertion part now forming the payload, and then um, I need to form BB frames and forward to the next uh, module. So working on that plan is to finish it by end of this week or middle of next week, and then a test case for that, and then going uh, and then go further from there. Uh, simultaneously, also I will be uploading code uh, for entry to review. So yeah, that's that's the plan. Thank you. Is there anything that you need or anything standing in your way? No, nothing. Okay. Don't yeah. Worry. Just just let me know. Um, sure. All right. Hey, Paul. Do you have any any reports or or uh, questions or? I know. I'm just here in case somebody needs some remote lab support. Try to keep a keep tabs on what's going on so that I'll be able to provide the support when it's needed. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like the the analog devices dev board is a will be wanted and needed. Um, I think we're we're in decent shape there, right? Yeah, I believe the the parts are in place. We just have to figure out how to operate them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you. All right. So I'll give a brief report. I, I got remote access to to my virtual machine on Chonk, the San Diego Remote Labs PC, working. Thank you to Paul for for working to make it easier to use. Um, I think you really do need admin access to the to the VMs, uh, and so that's that's been an adjustment that we've made. I got the DBB FPGA um, code base built, uh, and I'm more confident about using Vivado. So I use command line Vivado. That's what I did before. But the GUI does have a huge number of improvements since I last did a big design. There's lots of reports and and useful things, and a lot in the documentation database that didn't used to exist. Um, things like power planning and and physical pin layout planning that that makes a lot of sense to me. So I'm happy. Um, I don't know a whole lot about Yosis. I've done very basic hello world stuff for Yosis, but uh, I'll start working on on getting better at that. Um, the, the I was able to get the thing synthesized, uh, but the run tests and the run synth shell scripts still don't work for me on the VM. And that's all, it looks like it's continual integration type of testing and there should be something happening. Uh, and all of those nice cores and threads on the, the, the lab PC should be able to help uh, do these things pretty quickly. Um, so I really wanna use the tests as intended by, by Andre um, and I'll keep working on that. Um, starting today through July 7th, I'll be traveling. So the remote lab will be, <laughs> the remote access is going to actually be used remotely, not just from next door. Uh, so we will uh, hopefully by by doing this and coming up to speed and and pitching in that that we'll, we will we'll be able to find and solve even more problems with remote access and make it better for others. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just try to get synthesis to work without relying on the run synth scripts uh, and start start working up to to being able to to understand and and test and and get things working over the air. And um, yeah, I don't I don't have any. I don't have anything blocking me except, um, you know, just learning curve and it's uh, resolving. So soon. Uh, Michelle, one question. <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, one question. Oh, uh, even I have faced this problem uh, when I try to build DVB FPGA. Sometimes it has passed. It is, it's able to synthesize and sometimes it has failed. So can can you document the process so that um, we all are on the same page and we are all using the same set of tools and everything? Yes, I think that's super important. Um, I will do that. I'll take that action. I'll document yeah. everything. I've been putting the stuff that I've been typing into the FPGA channel, um, but not. Okay. I'll, I'll do a. I'll do a better job yeah. of wrapping it up. So so far, you know, it's uh, basic command line batch mode using Vivado mm -hmm. to using the build script that that Andre included, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know, after figuring out that I didn't have the sub modules, it, that part worked. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but now we're up to uh, making synthesis work, and I'll I will definitely document. Uh, everything and uh, where would you prefer it be? Where would you like that to live? Um, yeah, uh, I mean Thomas and uh, one person more are working on integrating everything. So the tool yeah. that they have selected, anything is fine. Okay. 
yeah, I'll I'll keep a doc. I'll start a document on on how I'm blundering through the process of of learning and making it synthesize and figuring out yeah. uh, how how best to support the work uh, and and share it. It, it. And you know, we'll we'll figure out where. Um, but I'll I'll make sure that you have it. And also, uh, I was able to access a remote PC uh, via there is one machine, and I was able to access that, and then. Uh, so all that steps are very much there in the documentation for us. Those are very much clear. Uh, now, the, the new setup that you have done where we can actually test uh, analog device card, uh, if we can document that also, so that as soon as I'm done, I can just use that. Okay. Yeah, that's, I think uh, that's gonna be up to Paul to uh, to do that and I'll help test it and figure out if there's anything missing and and we'll get that done. Yeah, sure. And how, how we can verify our results, whether it's correct. Yeah. yeah. So but essentially it's how to how to log in remotely to the analog devices uh, and the zinc card and the analog devices card, how to how to log in and access that is the that's there. That's already there. It's a oh, good documentation okay. for that. Yeah. Anything oh, okay. further than that you have done? Make sure it gets documented. That documentation is there up till that part. You're very able to log into sync devices. Anything okay. further than that you have done in the recent week? Not me. Have you, Paul? No. That's, okay. Uh, okay. Then it's fine. That's yeah. Sort of okay, beyond good. what I even know how to how to make progress <laughs> on. I don't know what you need. Are you going to need just access to it, or are you going to need some I/O from it, or monitoring capability, or, or what sort yes, of requirements? Yeah. Monitoring. Okay. If you could write a yeah. paragraph or two about what you like to see from that, that would help. Okay. Okay, sure. Okay. Thank you. All right. So it sounds like Thank nothing's you. missing yet. Just the net. You know, okay. I gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. All right. We'll do it. Cool. All right. Any any last questions or comments or instructions for me uh -huh. to help with anything? When we started the meeting, you mentioned about there is one August goal and there is one more thing we need to talk about. So what's that? There is one August demo thing, and you talk. Oh about. yes, uh, Ham Expo is the the event yes. for for um, in August that we were intending targeting, and then yeah. Um, yeah. and we've we we will still be doing that and presenting work. Um, we have a booth. We have a, a, a the ability to have a presence at the event, uh, which is exciting. So I'm I'm going to go ahead and I've already said yes to that. Uh, you know, so we can do whatever we want to with the with the booth. But and we also have presentations scheduled, to so the demonstrations are easier to do at the booth, kind of in person, uh, as at the convenience of, you know, uh, participants and volunteers on the team. Uh, the and the the presentations will be scheduled with the sensitivity towards time zone, so I'll I'll keep keep on that. Um, so that's our our one of our main yeah. ways of presenting. Uh, and then the other one was the that we we're now looking at is is taking the code base to to Google uh, through the open source ASIC process. Okay. And it isn't necessarily in August, but it would be really nice to you know be able to to have some idea of when we want to have a decision on what to do with the design how much of the design is going to be included i think a baseband ship is a good is a good um you know body of work to to present that way um and we need to make that decision and we need to synthesize using yosis and then be able to present it to the tool and i don't know if there's a schedule for that um you know but but being being done with large chunks of it by august that's a that's a good schedule yeah, I think is the it, the next um, submission is sometime October, possibly. So that might okay. fit quite well. Okay. Yeah, let's let's try to do that. Does that answer your question, Anshul? Was that clear yeah, enough? Or that's okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I think I'm traveling over the next two weeks. So uh, uh, if Either Steve Conklin or or Paul will will run the meeting if I'm not able to, uh, from from where I'd be at. I'll be uh, traveling in between a couple of different states in the southern U.S. Um, and depending on the meeting schedule, may or may not be able to to run it, uh, but someone will, and it'll be uh, posted ahead of time. That's great. You bet. Thank you. Thank great you. meeting. Thank you. All right. See you soon. Yeah. See you. Cheers. Bye.